Okay, my name is Julio Merlino. I am a professor of saxophone here at the Federal University in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, I work mainly with jazz music, but I also has a background in classical and still still playing classical music as well. But uh, and I'm a composer also. I compose both classical, contemporary music, and popular jazz music, Brazilian music. I'm always working on some research of new materials for composing. Okay. Well, improvisation for me it's a very, very broad term, and I I've seen improvisation in theater and poetry and anything in music and all kinds of arts and improvisation in conversation. I see improvisation as a broad thing, but I work mainly with a very specific type of improvisation, that is the, the jazz improvisation. It's a melodic improvisation over chord progressions, mainly. But we have what we call free jazz, that is kind of after you learn all the chord progressions, after you learn all the leaks and phrasing and all, all the melodic possibilities you can create over a, a chord progression, over changes, how they say, uh, you can go to free stuff. You can start to experiment on just improvising and forget about it. All this stuff. It's, I think it's, 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 a, it's, very, it's a, the, the most difficult part for all the students of improvisation is get to that point when they, they can they where they can they can forget about scales and patterns and harmonies and just improvise. <laughs> I think I think in a, in a in a broader sense of improvisation, I think it's very difficult to, to teach it because it's, it's 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 a kind of freedom that people has people have naturally. We improvise. When we speak, we were improvising. So, but when it comes to jazz music and jazz improvisation, it it can be it can be taught, and it has to be because there's a lot of a lot to it that is technical. To improvise over a two-five chord progression, you you have to know the two-five, the, the the arpeggios, the 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 way that the chords inter Inter interact among themselves and and which kind of notes you, you can use over these progressions, scales and set of notes, leaks, patterns. So I think the main thing it, uh, I try to do is teach them harmony and uh, 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 how to analyze melodies that go over these chord progressions and, and try to see the relationship between them. And I, I try to, to start the improvisation process in their minds with leaks, patterns, preset, presetted phrasing that they can memorize and experiment on. And then I, 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 I go slowly, slowly to the free stuff when they are really improv, improv, improvising. You see, like uh, you can I, I, sometimes I, I use a like a whole tone scale. It's a nice, it's a nice tool to, to do this because whole tone scales is difficult to apply in a tonal context. Probably in an augmented fifth chord, dominant seventh, augmented fifth, you can use this, but it's not a standard tonal scale. So, and it's a, a scale that is easy to play because it's, it's only six, six different tones, and it's a, it's a good tool for them to start. Creating something, anything. So I, I propose three notes, four notes, one color, uh, one rhythm. Try to to maybe improvise just one one part of it. I give I give them a group of notes and they improvise the rhythm, or I give them a rhythm and they improvise the notes. And most of the time, it has to be tonal because that is the that's the the the, the system that we have on. On our on our ears since we were born here in the the the, the this part of the, the globe. <laughs>